What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to my humble abode. I am coming to you all the way from the west coast of Canada. And today, I am reacting to the Chemical Brothers, the uh, group, a duo, electronic duo, who've been around since, I think, 94, 95. These guys have a huge body of work. And together with acts like Prodigy, Fatboy Slim, really, really brought... Uh, big beat electronic um, to the forefront of like popular culture and really popularized that type of music with uh, their sample heavy, uh, you know, just really, really twisting and creating new music from interesting samples. Sometimes the samples are, you know, distorted and manipulated beyond recognition. I'm sure a lot of the sounds that come from their music are samples that people didn't even know about but it's that type of electronic music that really really uh uses synthesizers and um you know digital manipulation to create new sounds from old sounds and uh, it's creating it's like cop it's not copy and pasting it's creating these sort of musical collages of of sound and then digitally manipulating them to come up with uh new art so here we have the Eve of Destruction, which coincidentally samples Clash Action's big hit from the, uh, what was it called? Uh, darn it, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. Uh, I can't remember right now, but it is featuring the wonderful Aurora. So that uh, just shows how much you can bounce around in different genres. You know, dip her toe here, dip her finger there, and really, really retain that same sense of uh, aura aura get it all right so the chemical brothers eve of destruction let's get to it did the chemical brothers ever sample cool keith i know they sampled keith murray they sampled keith murray a classic uh, new york rapper but did they sample i know prodigy sampled cool keith with smack my bitch up um, one of their big hits Cool Keith, one of my favorite rappers of all time. That dude is insane. He's wacky. He's strange, eclectic, eccentric. All the words. That's Cool Keith. Also known as Dr. Doom. Uh, Doc. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to get into a Cool Keith um, uh, history lesson here. So, The Chemical Brothers, Eve of, Descri Eve of Destruction. Uh, I'm guessing this is going to be taken an apocalyptic theme and uh using that to create this atmosphere so let's see what we get as always recommendations or requests they can go down below you wonderful people and uh yeah this is live at glastonbury in the united kingdom big festival so let's check it out live live version of this the eve of destruction what um yeah you know this type of music is born from bands like Kraftwerk, uh the uh, electronic uh you know rise of the 70s and 80s craft work and, and different electronic groups but look at aurora she's looking like a uh, hal 9000 cross with a power ranger something there the eve of destruction who knew we needed a 20 foot tall Aurora staring us down? That vocal distortion on her voice. Or Daft Punk. Like I'm watching like a bizarro world demented version of 
Power Rangers. It's it's mildly terrifying. More than mildly terrifying, actually. But it's got some definitely some science fiction aesthetics. Some very, very cool choreography. All right. Big B, Big B. Terrifying Max. Juxtaposing a woman in a suit. Those masks are nightmare fuel. It looks like Speed Racer. By the way, crap work, top right corner. Well, your left. I do have like an affinity, uh, a soft spot for electronic music, electronic sounds. I love synthesizers, you know, Moog, Roland, all of those tools. Uh, a guy like Vangelis, specifically, one of my favorite composers ever, uh, famously did the score for Blade Runner, one of my favorite movies. One of those movies where most people would say it's boring. Um, we were watching 2001 A Space Odyssey the other night. And, uh, you know, I can see how some people... It, it's not for everybody. You know, it can be a little boring for some people. But for me, it's like a feast of visual stimulus that I love. Uh, Kubrick's compositions. Uh, the musical choices that he made. I mean, the Blue Danube scene when those... Ships are dancing so elegantly through space. The special effects, the, the feat that he was able to accomplish with those special effects with a film coming out in 1968. It's incredible. But on the same token, uh, the plot is very, very bare bones and they leave a lot up to the imagination of the viewer. I feel that the plot spans like all of humanity. Like It's playing around with very large ideas but back to this song very bouncy big beat cool samples i like the sounds aurora's killing the vocals she doesn't have a ton to do uh they sort of use that it's the eve of destruction and then they have that vocal in, in uh, like uh, vocal distortion on her voice um, but her sound fits this perfectly and yeah i was saying that in the video that's craft works um i can't remember what that What's the title of that record? Telephone? Telephone? No. Um, anyways, yeah, Kraftwerk, sort of the in another innovative group who started playing around with uh, the synthesizer and, and, and drum machines. And, and I got to add the click, and then the click is going to be dun, 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 you know? That's how they started doing that. And then the, the discotheque. And people dancing around. It also reminds me of the Cool Keith video for um, Superhero. Check that out. Cool Keith Superhero featuring MF Doom. But. Here, so it's not her song, right? But she 
compliments. The song perfectly. Psychedelic. Noisy. Chaotic. It makes for a very challenging listen that would be too loud for a lot of people. I don't know if you would call this dubstep or where dubstep comes into the equation, uh, but you can hear that similar build-up sequence. You know, everything builds up and it comes to this crescendo and then the beat really drops and goes back in. And I'm sure a lot of people in the audience are on drugs. <laughs> but it makes for a challenging, interesting listen. Aurora's vocals kind of like very complimentary to the song. I'm not sure if she wrote it or I didn't really catch any of her vocals. Um, they were sort of drowned in that really industrial cacophony of, of sound, that wall of sound. Um, but her beautiful sort of serene vocals overlaid onto that. It creates an interesting juxtaposition. So I do like it. Uh, I... Chemical Brothers, it's not something I listen to a lot. It's just sometimes it's too much for me. It's cool to like dance to it, but uh, yeah. All right, that's it. That's it, folks. What did you think? What did you think of that? I would be interested to see what older generation people would say. Obviously, there's people of an older generation that would appreciate and love some of this type of music, considering this came out, uh, or this type of music at least started gaining prominence in probably the 80s, maybe even the late 70s. Um, these sort of more industrial, cacophony, uh, layered build up um, music, you know, big beat, big drums, samples, strange sampling. Uh, you have songs on that record that, you know, they're just boing. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, boing stick, boing stick, something like that. There's a telephone one where they're just sampling sort of odd sounds to create these, these, these interesting compositions, these collages of different ideas. Um, but the beat here is so big and, and there's there's a lot going on. But just like some people wouldn't have liked this, some people don't like hip-hop, some people don't... And then there's a lot of young people that don't like anything that's, you know, not loud. They want something, you know, with a big beat. And, and, and there's other people that are more language-oriented or, or pros. They enjoy evaluating and, and absorbing, um, breaking down lyrics. The, the more lyrical minds, there's the more musical minds, there's people that are bits of both. Uh, I sort of, I can dip my toes into pretty much every genre, not every band, but almost every genre. I don't know. Obviously I have my pref preferences and the reason for those preferences is sometimes interesting to ponder. Like why do our minds gravitate to certain things why do i love 2001 a space Odyssey so much is it because of the visual aspects mainly is it because of kubrick's eye as a photographer you know the simple photography of his films is so exquisite you know his framing 
It's always perfect. It's always on point. His, the visual cues and the visual moments of just perfection that he's able to create. A lot of people would say, oh, you know, he's overrated. And then I look at guys, Scorsese and Tarantino. Tarantino is kind of like a, a modern version. Sometimes I wonder what Kubrick would think of Tarantino's films. Uh, and then you got to go back even farther to like originators, you know, Ingmar Bergman and uh, some of the Eastern European and the European filmmakers of the time. They were doing such interesting things that really influenced a lot of filmmakers in the United States. And just like musical artists, everything is more or less influenced and or derived from a prior piece of music. I just did a video to um, the Led Zeppelin cover of Rock and Roll by Dan Gonzalez. And I mean, Led Zeppelin, come on. Their first four, they were so legendary, so influential when it comes to rock music. Uh, it's really gets to be difficult for people to innovate when their musical, you know, perception and the zeitgeist has been infused with these pop culture phenomena like a Led Zeppelin or a Rolling Stones or a Pink Floyd. And now we have artists nowadays, and I'm talking about music that really, 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 really uh, becomes one and the same and infused into the collective, almost worldwide zeitgeist of music. But then there's music on other continents. I'm sure they say, uh, what is this? We don't, we don't like that. We have our own thing. Thank you very much. Stop being ignorant of the, uh, how, how large the world is. Um, so that was cool. That was Aurora. It was actually the Chemical Brothers featuring Aurora. Eve of Destruction, an apocalyptic soundscape of, uh, you know, it was interesting to say the less, to say the least. So, see y'all soon. As always, any recommendations or requests down below in the comment section is where those would typically go. And uh, we'll see you soon, whenever, someday, sometime. Take care of yourselves. Eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables. Make sure you get your protein, too. And drink lots of water. Your body's like a flower. It's like a flower. And put some plants in your house, too. And then talk to your plants. It's soothing, not just for you, but for the plants. You can have plant friends. Hey, I got no friends, but I have plants. They're my friends. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you all soon. Peace out, everybody. Later.